evening, Doctor. Beautiful speech, loved it, brought me to tears. Thank you very much. Now, across the world today, thank you. Across the world today, the words you mentioned were militant, uh, sorry, the words you mentioned were fanaticism, fanatics. Uh, it's a bit related to the sister's questions before. Oh, thank you for reminding me. My name is Shah, and I'm an English language student at a university, Sultan Zainal Abidin, a local university here. Now, my question is, now, across the world, we've got a lot of militant groups, ex uh, fanatic groups, if you will, that do a lot of violence, and the way the media paints them, they, they ransack, they pillage, they kill, they do a lot of things that the layman in Islam seems to be completely prohibited and not allowed. Groups, organizations like ISIS or the Boko Haram or those organizations that use religious motivations to resort to violence, then... In these cases, we see they are completely sure that what they are doing is right in the eyes of God, but they are not open to dialogue, the same dialogue that you propose, that we should accept, show proof, show evidence. They're not open to it. Now, and then they go as far, they, don't, they not only kill disbelievers, they also kill other people who call themselves Muslims. So, and they call other Muslims kufar, kafir, those who don't follow what they believe. So in that sense, what should be our response as Muslim individuals, as countries, and as governments when they do that. The brother has asked a common question that there are some fanatic groups and he named some of them like ISIS, like Boko Haram, and they kill the unbelievers and they kill innocent people and they kill the Muslims. What should we do? All what I said in my lecture is valid for them also. but. I would like to say something additional. Today we find that the media picks up the black sheep of the Muslim community and they portray as though they're exemplary Muslims. So this international media is picking up black sheep of the Muslim community and portraying as though they're exemplary Muslim. And unfortunately, we Muslims also unintentionally promote them, including you. Including you. You said you're a Muslim. What's their name you said? Shah. Shah. Brother Shah. Unintentionally, ignorantly, even you are promoting by calling ISIS. I'll tell you why. For example, if I tell I am the president of America, <laughs> will the media report that the president of America was in, was in Tarangano? <laughs> will you say that? Yes. Will you say that the president of America was in Tarangano? Yes. You say that? If I say I'm the president of America. Oh, oh knowing it to be false. Sorry? Yes. If I knew it, uh, if I knew If that. I say I am the president of America, will the media report that the president of America was in Tarangano? Oh. Will you say that? You yes. may say there is a man wearing a cap and a beard, <laughs> you know, maybe a lunatic. You will not agree with me because you know I'm false. Same way when an organization which is killing innocent human beings, Allah clearly says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, that if anyone kills any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, unless it be for murder or for spreading corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any human being, it is as though he has saved the whole nation. There is no verse in any other religious scripture besides the Quran which says that if any human being kills any other innocent human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And if anyone saves any other human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim, he has saved the whole nation. We know it very clearly. So now one organization calling itself to be the Islamic State is killing innocent people. Why are you repeating that they are ISIS? By repeating that they are Islamic State, of Syria and Iraq, you are promoting them ignorantly, right or wrong? Are they Islamic? So why are you calling them Islamic State? You should say anti-Islamic state of Iraq and Syria has killed innocent non-Muslims. By you calling them Islamic State, you are promoting them ignorantly, innocently, not deliberately. So what besides the Western media, even our Muslim media and we Muslims, unfortunately, so next time when you refer to them, refer to them as ISIS, not ISIS. 
anti islamic state of iraq and syria now this is a ploy of the enemies of islam the enemies of islam want to malign islam so when they make it in the media islamic state is doing this islamic state doing that everyone starts believing that islamic state is killing innocent people how can a islamic how can a muslim live as an islamic state how can a muslim kill any other innocent human being for you calling them isis is ignorantly innocently promoting them so my request to the muslim ummah is next time when you refer to them refer to them as anti-islamic state anti-islamic state killed innocent two innocent europeans or whatever you want to say say but don't repeat when when a lunatic says that i am president of america you won't repeat it so why are you repeating you may make a mistake in recognizing president of USA. You are a Muslim. You should not make a mistake in, this, in recognizing a Muslim and a non-Muslim. Anyone who's killing an innocent human being, he cannot be a Muslim. So unfortunately, we are promoting. And what is the percentage? What is the percentage of these Muslims with all these organizations? What is the percentage? You know, the Muslims today have 1.8 billion. All these terrorist so-called organizations, what is the percentage of the Muslim Ummah? Not even 0.01%, do you know that? Not even 0.01%, a minority of a minority. Most of them disagree with them. So we Muslims should be united and we should call them AISIS. When we are not united, they are getting promoted. So we should unite ourselves and say that any Muslim, any human being who kills an innocent human being can't be a Muslim, so we don't consider them to be Muslims. We unitedly we stand. So unitedly we stand and we quote the Quran. Same thing. Allah says in Surah Maida chapter 5 verse number 30 to give references. Yet the, the anti-Islamic media will promote them. Why? They want to malign Islam. Many of them, you know, many of them agree that they were created. By whom? By the enemies of Islam. So you are falling prey to the enemy of Islam. Unfortunately. What we say, they are black sheep of a community, even if they are a former community. They aren't following Quran and Sunnah. When they are not following, they cannot be Islamic State. Do you understand? So unfortunately, we are playing into the hands of the enemies. And they are fragmenting us. They are creating fitna. They are creating wars. One group with the other group. Shia with Sunni, with so and so group, with that group. And we Muslims, unfortunately, are falling into a trap. With all our differences, if we Muslims are united, on the basis of Quran and say Hadith, Inshallah will be a strong force and inshallah whether we unite or not Islam is going to prevail that's the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may, may he make us instrumental in uniting the Muslim ummah inshallah we'll have the last question from the sister side and the brother side uh, I am asking behalf on my non-Muslim friend through the Facebook and I will record the answer for him uh, he asked if a non-Muslim do all of the all of the all of what his religion teach him, yet he know nothing about Islam, and then he died, will he go to the hell too? Thank you. The sister asked a question that if a non-Muslim follows everything according to his or her religion and follows exactly and doesn't know about Islam, will he go to heaven or hell? That is the question. Point number one, 